Edward Murphy famously once said that whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Imagine you find your life on the brink of promise, prosperity, and abundance, when in one moment the rug is pulled out from beneath you. That is exactly what happened to a young wife and mother who found herself spiraling into an inescapable pit of desperation, fear, and paranoia and all because of one bad day. Now on Grim Visions, the tragic disappearance of April Pitzer. My name is of no consequence. You may call me Grim. Thousands of people go missing in our world each year. Many are never found. I am amongst the lost, and as such, I am compelled to bring you the stories of those I call the vanished. Be prepared, for these are my grim visions. April Beth Pitzer seemed to be living a charmed life in the sprawling confines of Fort Worth, Texas. The young woman was working a successful career as a model, was happily married, and expecting her first child. One day in mid-spring of the year 2000, she receives a knock on her door that turns her life upside down. The U.S. Marshal's Office has called on April to be a federal witness in a statewide methamphetamine case. You see, some years before, April was made an official drug informant by Arkansas police in exchange for escaping DWI charges. Now authorities hope to use her testimony in the cracking down of a major local drug ring. As a result, nothing would ever be the same for April. After the court case, the young woman seemed to decline into a never-ending spiral of deep paranoia. She looked over her shoulder constantly and began to use hard drugs as a way of coping with the escalating fear that someone was going to target her or her family as payback for testifying. Over the course of several months, her mental state deteriorated rapidly and combined with her rising drug use dealt a devastating blow to her marriage and her home life. April's in-laws had the courts confiscate her two daughters from her custody. It is at this lowest point in her life, April met a long-haul trucker who offered to bring her out to California in order to get a fresh start, which April dutifully accepted. Her final destination would be the town of Barstow, set deep in the Mojave Desert. Once there, April moves in with an individual amongst the trailer homes and back houses in a desolate part of the desert where drug and criminal activity are said to run rampant. After a few months of running amongst this most dangerous crowd, April is abruptly kicked out of the house in which she is staying and takes up residence with an elderly woman whom she is helping to nurse back to health because of the woman's extensive medical issues. She stays in sparse communication with her mother, Gloria Denton, back in Arkansas. After learning of her tenuous situation, Gloria begs her daughter to come back home to try and rebuild her shattered life. Gloria's constant pleas, coupled with April's longing to see her two daughters again, prompts her decision to go back to Arkansas. Gloria immediately begins to make plans for April's return, and April starts the process of collecting her things to leave California. However, in doing so, April is once again bouncing from house to house on an almost nightly basis. While she stays with the elderly woman during the day, the lack of an extra bedroom forces April to stay with different people at night. On one such stay, she meets a young woman with an uncanny link to her past. While at a social gathering, the young woman recognizes April from her time as a federal drug informant and relays to April that her husband was sent to prison directly resulting from April's court testimony. This greatly alarms April and she abruptly leaves the party. 
She returns back to the house in which she had been staying the past few nights, a house owned by a man named Charles Hollister, known around town as Uncle Chuck. She makes a phone call to her mother that night to wish her well, and it's at this point that April Beth Pitzer hasn't been seen or heard from in over 14 years. Several days later, Gloria is in the final stages of prepping to bring her daughter back home. However, she can't seem to get a hold of her. After repeated calls to Charles Hollister go unanswered, Gloria starts to panic. After almost two weeks, the elderly woman with whom April had been caring files a missing persons report with the San Bernardino PD, and a short time later, Hollister finally gets in contact with Gloria. Yet his news is grim. He reports that he hadn't seen April since the beginning of July and that in the meantime he had been busy moving a friend to Oregon. While on a trip out of town just before Independence Day of 2004, Charles says he returns home to find April gone. Although her luggage and belongings were still at his house, Hollister says he just assumed that April had already left to return to Arkansas, possibly leaving with another friend. Nearly a month later, authorities are alerted to a witness who tells them that they overheard a conversation alluding to April Pitzer while attending a party on the outskirts of Newbury Springs. The witness says that they overheard some of the patrons saying that April was killed and stuffed into a mine shaft somewhere near Ludlow, California. However, the tip cannot be substantiated. Through further digging into Hollister's background, police learn he has several connections in Ludlow, most notably a close associate who only goes by the name of Dan Dan. It turns out Dan Dan knows the minds of Ludlow very well and was somewhat of a feared figure amongst the locals. The miner was described as a reclusive hermit and was often known to leave threatening graffiti around his mining properties, warning others to stay away. When police try to question him, he is evasive at times and gets hostile with investigators, however denies having any knowledge of April Pitzer's whereabouts. Several supposed sightings of the missing young woman trickle in, including one of April waiting tables at a nearby Route 66 diner shortly before she was reported missing. A few months later, in a strange coincidence, both Hollister and Dan Dan both pass away from cancer. However, both of them strongly denying that either of them had anything to do with April's disappearance. Several of the Ludlow mines have been searched numerous times, but to date, nothing has been found, and Gloria Denton is left to wonder what happened to her daughter. As the years continue to roll by, perhaps the answers still lie within a silent old desert mine, who stubbornly continues to hold on to its secrets. As stated before, sometimes all it takes to derail everything in one's life is just one bad day. I think I know what that feels like. I had a bad day too once. Driving down the highway of life, I pulled off the exit, but I didn't read the sign. You know what I'm talking about. The one that reads, question everything. Trust no one. On behalf of Grim Visions, pleasant dreams. <laughs>